What's up, everybody? Thanks for joining me for this video. We're gonna talk about how the Enneagram of personality relates to the 16 personalities. So if you don't know, the Enneagram is like Myers-Briggs or the 16 personalities in that we are dividing people up and saying that people, people's personalities fall into one of these nine, in the case of the Enneagram, one of these nine kind of archetypes of people. Like everyone in one way or another can be described by one of these personalities. And Enneagram is interesting because it's really looking at what are your basic drives in life? Like what, what are your fears and what are you driven towards in order to get away from those fears? And it can be helpful to use Enneagram in conjunction with the 16 personalities. We're gonna talk about today what of the 16 personality types are most likely and least likely to be each of the Enneagram types. And hopefully by explaining it this way, even if you don't know much about the Enneagram, you can start to get a sense of what each type is like. And of course, I've made an introductory video about the Enneagram. You can click that card above my head and get an in-depth description of each type. But for now, we're really gonna be trying to describe the Enneagram types using the 16 personalities. So let's start off with type one on the Enneagram, which is called the Reformer. And I've got a lot of my descriptions here from the Enneagram Institute website, which is a great resource for learning about the Enneagram. So the Enneagram type ones, they're all about the rules and they're about being right, doing the right thing. And they really hate being criticized, which can lead them to being perfectionistic. So which of the 16 personalities are most likely to B ones, I would say that generally it's the J types, especially the TJ types, because the Js are more likely to be focused outward and trying to get things done in the outside world and being concerned with what other people think is right and wrong and the criticism that can be directed at them. Now, of course, nobody likes criticism, but I think the P types, especially IP types, which I think are less likely to be ones, those types can more easily just ignore other people criticism and be like, okay, whatever, those people are stupid. Whereas the J types are more like, wait, they're criticizing me? Oh crap, maybe I am wrong. Maybe I need to like make sure that I have things perfect so they can't say anything. The J types are also just much more concerned with the rules and the structure and making sure everything is in order. The P types are like, that's stupid. Why? <laughs> we don't need to follow rules, okay? Let's not worry about that. All right, so let's move on to type two on the Enneagram, which is called the helper. The helpers are warm, compassionate, giving. So they want to be loved. They want to express their feelings for others. And they really crave validation from others. It's the kind of thing where they will do a lot of nice stuff, but secretly it's because they want other people to love them and be like, oh, you're doing great, good job doing all these nice things for everybody. So which of the 16 personalities are most likely to be type twos? Well, clearly, this is one of the more clear ones. I think it's the FJ types, especially the ESFJ and ENFJ who have dominant extroverted feeling because the description for the type two is basically the description for extroverted feeling. It's, it's basically the same thing. But here's the thing is that I think a lot of women will type themselves as twos regardless of their personality type, especially mothers. So I think once once a, a woman has a, a kid or two, they'll be more likely to identify as a two, even if they maybe really aren't. Because the two is a very motherly type. So who are less likely to be twos? Probably the opposite of the FJ types, which would be the TP types. They probably are not gonna really be identifying very much with this whole concept of being warm, and giving and, you know, kind of martyring themselves for other people, which is what twos do. So next up we have the Enneagram type three, which is called the achiever, sometimes called the performer. They are very success oriented. They really want to be affirmed by achieving stuff. It's like their self-worth is bound up in the stuff that they accomplish. So they're always trying to get attention. They're always trying to distinguish themselves from other people. And they really want to be admired and to impress others. And they also know how to like play the social game that can be you know, very politically minded when it comes to handling other people. Now with the type three, I'm actually thinking that any Myers-Briggs type any of the 16 personalities could identify as a three 
if they are driven enough to accomplish stuff. And really, any type can be driven to accomplish things and get validation from their accomplishments. Now, you can make the argument that the extroverts are more likely to be a three type and the super introverted types are less likely, but I, I still think that any type could be a three. Now we move on to the type four on the Enneagram, the individualist, sometimes called the romantic or the artist. These types are like very introspective and concerned with self-expression. They really are concerned with expressing themselves and their individuality and setting themselves apart from others. Like there, there's this whole thing with type fours where they feel defective in some way and really different from everyone else. And so they need to like play into that and be like, I really need to differentiate myself from other people in order to have some value. Fours are also very creative. They love to create stuff. They love to be surrounded with beautiful things, but they can also be moody and withdrawn from other people. Of the 16 personalities, I think intuitives are more likely to be fours, especially the NF types, because the fours are just all about getting into their imagination and thinking about all these possibilities and like kind of withdrawing from the real world, which is kind of an intuitive thing. And they're all about their feelings. Like the, the fours are very much focused on trying to understand their own feelings. So NFs I think are pretty likely, but I th it's within the realm of possibility to get uh, a type four who is an SF or an NT type. I think ST types are probably the least likely to identify as fours and maybe just more broadly sensing types in general, less likely to identify with that, with that type. While we're here, why don't we stop momentarily and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. Thanks for sitting through that. And if you're enjoying this video, hit the thumbs up button. It really makes a difference. All right, let's move on to the type five, which is called the thinker. And much like the type two being a very clear description of extroverted feeling, the type five, the thinker, is a pretty clear description of introverted thinking. So the type fives are described as being intense and cerebral. They just wanna be able to understand everything around them. And a lot of the reason why they want to be able to understand everything is to like prevent it from destroying them. So definitely any thinking type is more likely to be a five, but especially the TP types, especially like the INTP and ISTP, the, it's basically, like I said, type five is a description of introverted thinking. Types unlikely to be fives, feelers in general, although sometimes you do see like INFPs who identify as type fives because the fives are probably the most introverted of the types. So I, I can see why people identify that way if they are super introverted, but generally feeler types, not as five-ish, especially uh, SFs and es most especially like ESFJ and ENFJ. They're really not fives at all, but you'll, you'll probably still find people who are like ENFJs who are like, yeah, I'm a five. Sometimes we get really fascinated with the parts of our personality that we don't prefer. And that fascination leads us to think that that is really who we are, that, that almost like we do that all the time. Like if I'm an intuitive type that never goes outside or does anything physical, and then one day I run a mile, that's the thing I'm gonna focus on and be like, dude, I am really sporty. Next up is the type six, which is called the loyalist. They really wanna have security. That's like the thing that they're all about. This, is, this type, it has anxiety about like being abandoned by people or about like the chaos and uncertainty of the world overwhelming them. And so they always wanna be, they wanna be surrounded by people that they are loyal to, like their friends or a greater organization or identity group that they are a part of. They wanna feel certain and they wanna have reassurance and especially like reassurance from other people about how the other people feel about them. And the thing about the six is, this is another one that could really be any type. And that really makes sense when you hear some people who who claim that the six is the most common Enneagram type, perhaps even half of everyone in the world is a type six. I think it's maybe a little bit more likely for J types to be sixes than P types, just because 
that whole thing about you know certainty and anxiety speaks to like wanting more of that structure that the J types want, but but really, truly, any type could be a six. Okay, then we go to the type seven, which is called the enthusiast, and they are always like seeking out new experiences. They always, they want to prevent themselves from being bored by going for that new, new, new. They really have FOMO. They're afraid of missing out on exciting stuff and opportunities. They're really concerned with maintaining their freedom and they are also like really afraid of not having enough, like not getting enough of what they need. Now, if you've watched my channel enough, just from that description, you probably know that the type seven is most likely to be an EP type. Especially, I would say, the extroverted sensors, the ESFP and ESTP. Because that's, I mean, that's basically a description of those types. They're always looking for new, new experiences. They don't want to be limited. They don't want to be boxed in. They want to just be able to keep gathering in the new. Unlikely types, IJs. IJs are a lot less likely to be sevens. You rarely hear like someone say, I'm an INFJ type seven on the Enneagram. It's like not really what, what IJs are all about, but it does happen. People do identify with that part of themselves. It's just not likely. Then we go to type eight, the challenger. You know, this type is powerful, dominating, the type that's like yelling at everyone else. They, will <laughs> they like being in charge and they like being self-reliant. They need to prove to other people that they are strong, not weak. And by doing that, they're kind of like looking for the validation from others to like, <laughs> like I can't be strong and self-reliant unless other people tell me that that's what I am. They wanna feel like they're important and they also wanna feel like they're in control of whatever situation they're in. Type eight is most likely going to be EJs, especially the lead extroverted thinkers like an ESTJ or ENTJ. You know, I mean, that's what the ESTJ and ENTJ like stereotypically do is they're bossing people around. They always wanna be in control. They wanna be in charge. They're trying to prove to other people and get that validation that they are like strong, that they can be self-reliant. Unlikely IPs, you're, rare, you're not gonna hear someone be like, I'm an ISFP type eight. It's not, <laughs> not, not something I've ever heard at least. The IPs don't really like bossing people around. They'd rather just do their own thing and like, I can be self-reliant just by doing my own thing and never talking to anyone else. And then we come to the last Enneagram type, the type nine called the peacemaker. Nines are easygoing to the point where I've heard it described before where it's like the nines almost like hide their personality. It's like they're trying to just fit in. They don't really have any kind of like strong uh, exterior element of their personality because they are always trying to maintain harmony or create harmony. They're trying to bring people together. They're the kind of person who's always like, I'll just do whatever you want to do. I don't, I don't really care. I don't have any opinions. I'll just, you know, I'm not trying to rock the boat here. They're, they're really conflict avoidant and they are really just trying to keep people happy around them and avoid anything that is upsetting. So this type is most likely, I think, to be feelers. I think that should be pretty apparent because it's all about emotional harmony and all that, but especially the FP types, which might confuse you because the whole harmony thing is more of a, a extroverted feeling FJ thing, but I think the FP types, which are introverted feelers, are very likely to really just internalize a lot of stuff that they actually feel and not express it for the purpose of just like keeping everyone calm and avoiding any conflict. Who is unlikely to be a type nine? I would think thinkers in general, especially the TJ types. TJ types may say they don't like conflict, but they're always kind of like running into it somehow. Let me know in the comments below what you think about these connections here. What's your 16 personalities type and your Enneagram type? And would you like to see more Enneagram content from me. Thanks for watching. Watch another video right here or the whole playlist right here. And until next time, stay cool and attractive.